everyone and welcome back to my channel. In today's video I'm going to be talking to you about the end of year review process for me as a PhD student. Given that I just had my sort of end of 2021 review with my supervisors and my research studies panel. Basically just talking to you about what that is, how I prepared for it and what the results were. So it is going to depend a lot university to university and even school to school within universities what types of regular assessment you need to do as a PhD student. So the way it works in my university is that we have our supervisors so you can have either one or two supervisors and I have two supervisors and then you have what's known as a research studies panel that includes your supervisors and any additional professors that are going to be reviewing your research from time to time. My research studies panel contains five people in total so my two supervisors and then two other professors from my university and one other professor from another university and the reason I have that is because my program is part of a centre for research training and it's split across multiple universities in Dublin so it wouldn't be very typical I think to have a, a professor from another university on the panel but it's because that professor is very much involved in the research area of the running science part of my research and so two of the professors on the panel three including my supervisor are more in the running science and two of them are more in the computer science and machine learning. It's hard to balance those two because I think each side wants something a little bit different um, and it's important to sort of try and figure out a way to blend those objectives. So the purpose of the research studies panel essentially is to track your progress and make sure that you're making progress towards your PhD and so they're basically there to make sure that you're developing your research plan and sticking to that research plan or if something happens you know that you're coming up with a way to get around that and basically knowing where you're going to be publishing your results and creating a thesis plan and they're basically there to just make sure that you're sticking to all of that and sort of ticking the boxes along the way. They're also there to make sure that you are developing your professional plan so that by the end of your PhD you have a sense of where you're going with your career and you've done things along the way to help with that. There's no, I think, strict requirement. I think you have to meet them at least once a year. At the beginning of second year, really, I met them twice in, the, in a short span of time to sort of summarise everything that I did in first year and prepare for my stage two transfer. Now this is another part of my university specifically, but it's something similar in different universities where you have a big assessment at the end of about 18 months which decides if you're actually going to be continuing with your PhD or if you should really leave with a master's if it's not really clear that you're, you've are you made sufficient progress in your PhD. So I did that last year and I have a couple of videos where I'm just talking about my preparation for that. So I'm past that stage now so this is just a sort of normal yearly review and it's probably, I suppose, it's likely that I'll meet them again at the end of next year. I don't know if I'll meet them sometime in between, but if I'm meeting them by the end of next year, that will probably be discussing the thesis and what the write-up process is gonna look like. Possibly there'll be one more project to be done after that, but in general, it's probably gonna be more around the thesis plan. For those meetings, we have to prepare a document known as a research and professional development form, so an RPDP form. And part of that is filled in by the student and then part of that is filled in by the chair of your research studies panel. And the chair of your research studies panel is typically one of the professors and it's not your supervisor. And what I do think is good about these meetings with them is that you get to talk to people that are familiar with the research area and familiar with the research but not as close to your research project as you and your supervisors because it is very easy to end up in sort of this bubble and not really think about the outside world of what other people will think and I feel like you end up getting a lot of really good feedback about what a typical person would be wondering about the research and what you're likely to get asked about really in the Viva because if people who are you know familiar enough with the research and not necessarily been reading all of the work along the way are asking these questions then people who are reading the full thesis will certainly be asking these questions. So the RPDP form has a few sections. The first is the section of ongoing research. So there you're providing like an update of what you've been up to recently. So what the work has been. So I provided basically an update of all of the work we've done in the last year, which was around injury prediction and the new data that we've gotten now 
and the sort of summarization work that has been done. And then also a little brief update on this collaboration work that we have working at the moment. And then there's another section providing the future work plan. And that's meant to be giving a sense of what you're expecting to do over the next year to get further with your research. So um, I was talking about two main things. One is sort of the summarization work because now that we have this new data, there really is almost an endless list of potential projects that could come from that. And so trying to pick a few really useful ones that will feed back into the predictive work will be really important for the next, probably the first couple of months of 2022. And then sort of getting back into the predictive work and using all of that information as a way to design the models and really come up with concrete training plan recommendation. Then we have to sort of share all of our credits and just sort of provide an update about any classes. So I just have a list of all of the classes I've taken since I've completed them, any prior learning as well, any career or professional development workshops or modules, they go in there. And I feel like that's one thing I probably need to do a little bit more next year is like do a few more things like that. Whether we've done our research integrity training and then any other relevant activities so I just put down like any of the publications and um, any of the presentations that I did uh, the sort of I suppose scholarship program that I did that was a week long that I took part in this outreach program called I'm a scientist get me out of here the committee that I'm on for equality diversity inclusion and then I put down my internship as well and then there's a section to be completed by the chair of the RSP which is progress to date uh, recommendations going forward and then any additional comments if necessary and then we all have to sign it and send it off. So that's what needs to be prepared in terms of the form and then we also prepare some slides for the meeting which I suppose is optional but it's definitely good to have something to share I think in the meeting. So what I gave was basically just a brief update of the program that I'm in and where I am in that stage. So the program that I'm in has some like specific requirements. I provided just this to give a sense of like confirming that I've done all my taught modules, I've done my placement, and now it's more the time I've passed the stage to transfer. I'm now in the point where I'm gonna be working sort of more dedicatedly on the PhD work and you know, the other stuff is all sort of done. And then I gave update about the internship. So all of the things that I sort of got from that and how it went and everything like that. And then I talked a little bit about my career goals. So given I did enjoy the internship, but I think I'd prefer to stay in academics and work towards a career in academia. That would be my preference. So I shared that with them and I talked about some of the things that I'm doing to help with that. So um, being part of a committee, teaching work, trying to take more of an active role now and do more TAing rather than just demonstrating. Um, getting involved in outreach, so doing different sort of outreach activities with schools and things like that, and then social media as well. And I gave a brief update of the type of data that we have, so that we have a lot of data basically from Strava. I gave a high level overview of my thesis and the objectives of my thesis. So this is a graphic that I made in Canva, and I do have a video coming soon about how I make things in Canva. So like this graphic here is so helpful just to have a really good thing to point to that summarizes my entire thesis. And so I'll have a video coming soon about how I use Canva for making presentations, making um, graphics and my Instagram posts, all of that coming soon. So then I gave an update of some work that we presented at a conference this year. So this was presented at the International Conference of Case-Based Reasoning. So I had a few slides just going through the sort of high level overview of the project and um, how it worked and then the results as well. So I didn't spend too much time on it and we did go back over it a little bit because there was some interest around it and then I went through some other updates for other projects that I'm working on and then talked about the new data that we have and sort of gave it a summary of how big the data set is. So and how we've sort of made some exclusions to the data set and then some just initial, I suppose, some initial results that we have, which I can't share just because it is new. And then I talked about the work to be completed, so the potential papers that we could write around that, and then the training plan recommendation work as well, and like what's hoped to achieve to be achieved with that in terms of explainability and just recommending training plans in general 
and the publications that we have so far. So that was it for the slides and then the meeting basically involved sort of a Q&A session and sort of a feedback session around all of that. I got a lot of really helpful feedback during that time. Um, my two supervisors tended to be like quiet during that meeting because it's more about getting feedback from the other members of the team and on occasion they would sort of come into the the conversation about you know certain things but typically it was more about getting feedback from the other professors so um, a lot of what was being talked about was around sort of user studies and validating the work with real users and to be honest I'm not entirely sure how much of a user study we will have at the end of this because a lot of the work that we have done like there's still a lot to do in terms of modeling and I think the most likely scenario of doing a user study would be doing something where we get real runners to look at the potential recommendations and what they would look like and sort of say do they look reasonable does it seem like something you use like that kind of way like validating in that way but not necessarily a live user study because it would require building an app and building something reliable and I don't think that in the next year and a half it's likely that I will do that. And then the other thing was around sort of validating basically the injury prediction work that we've done. We've been using training breaks as a proxy for injury and so there was a big conversation around using a 14 day break. Why is that used over other lengths which is something that we want to explore more with the training break summarization work. But as well, like, is there any way to validate, you know, get a few users to go and label their data, which would be sort of a big undertaking, you know, going through the ethical approval and all for access to the data and not knowing for sure then if that's still going to provide hugely accurate results. There's that. And then just around whether that like the the break, you know, is there ways to determine how it impacts performance? And we were, have been talking about that already with my two supervisors in a meeting that we had just before. But there was sort of a lot of talk around that specifically. Um, and then I suppose the conversation sort of turned to, well, whether it's an injury or not, like from the results that we have, either way, it affects performance. So some sort of break is indicative of worse performance, regardless of whether that's to do with an injury or just to do with the fact that um, runners who don't have as fast a marathon time tend to take more breaks in training they're not as diligent with their training which makes a lot of sense so either way there is like significant results there so regardless of whether we can call it an injury or not I suppose it doesn't really matter in terms of having those significant results and then there was also conversation around what I had talked about in terms of the career progression and so like with wanting to be in academics that publishing in journals will be important and specifically trying to target some sports analytics journals um, over the next couple of years, which is one of my goals, especially with this new data set. There's endless sports analytics papers that could be written that would be really interesting because a lot of the time sports science papers are small cohorts and being able to basically test a lot of what has been uh, studied in the sports literature on a data set with hundreds of thousands of runners would be really interesting I think for the sports science community and then also one of the professors was talking about doing some sort of course in like teaching and lecturing but again their field has more of a direct route from PhD into lecturing whereas it's likely for me that I'll do a postdoc so the other members of the uh, panel were sort of saying there's time for that in a postdoc really so it'd be more about doing enough so that I can get to a postdoc um, so there definitely was sort of conversation around that and I suppose it made me a bit nervous so I'm, um, I hope that they feel that I could do that type of career. The other thing that was sort of discussed was around like where the publication would be so I did mention that and just the overall like sort of publication goals and so there was just a few other things like that so that was sort of where the sort of conversation was and we sort of I think I presented for like 15 or maybe 20 minutes I think it was more like 15 and then we discussed for about 45 minutes and it was definitely a really good discussion very useful and um, I'm hoping that the the feedback form from the chair of the RSP will be positive. I tried to write down as much as I could but I was trying to like also engage in the conversation so it was just a bit of a challenge but yeah so that was my end of year assessment and I think overall it went well. I'd also met my supervisors just before the meeting and we were just talking about that sort of summarization work that we're working on at the moment and what we can do to sort of 
I suppose validate some of what we've been doing in a more concrete way and so there's still a lot of work to be done there and I really I'm really at the stage with this work that I want the one part of it to be done because I feel like there's so many other interesting avenues to explore with the data but I feel like we should just finish the training break summarization work first and it's getting to the point I just want that particular part to be done so that I can do the other ones but I know that we have to sort of be patient with it so it definitely is sort of motivating me to try and get it done sooner rather than later like to go and actually do the analysis quickly so yeah but that is it for this video I would really love to hear what the sort of yearly assessment is like in your university if it's anything similar or different and I hope that if you have a yearly assessment coming up around this time that it goes well for you so thanks so much for watching thanks to all of my wonderful members and I will see you all in the next video. Oh,